I got a letter. The name on the envelope said, Mary. My wife's name. I was recently watching a Let's Play of Silent Hill 2 when I began noticing similarities to a psychological cycle. I decided to do a little digging and I discovered something interesting. The story and lore of Silent Hill 2 is something I don't need to delve into for this video as there are countless videos of theories, ideas, breakdowns, and much more. But one thing I've noticed that I couldn't find any videos on is how closely Silent Hill 2 follows the Kubler-Ross grief cycle or otherwise more popularly known as the Five Stages of Grief. The Five Stages of Grief, for those that don't know, are as follows. Denial. Anger. Bargaining. Depression. And Acceptance. If you play Silent Hill 2 from beginning to end, and place each stage to specific parts in the story, it all lines up perfectly. As a quick disclaimer, this video will feature very heavy Silent Hill 2 spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled on anything in this game, I advise you to stop watching this video right now. James Sunderland is the protagonist in Silent Hill 2, and he came to Silent Hill in search of his wife Mary, who had passed away three years ago due to her sickness. The name on the envelope said, Mary, my wife's name, it's ridiculous, couldn't possibly be true. The first stage of grief is denial. Though the voice acting is stilted and for good reason, James immediately exhibits characteristics of denial through his words, tone, and his intonation. He's shocked that he's received a letter from his dead wife. He's confused as to why she would want him to come to Silent Hill, as he can't even remember where their special place was. If it was their special place, why doesn't James remember it? Or does he? Is he just actively avoiding going there? It's possible that his repressed memories are making him hesitant to go. Along the way, he bumps into a few other people that are lost in Silent Hill, each with their own demons and experience their own facets of grief and loss. The gameplay also begins to show the symptoms of denial, with James experiencing shock and fear when confronted with the first enemy, the lying figure. Later on, James bumps into Angela, who is contemplating something dark in a large, mirrored room. Both of them are showing even more characteristics, avoidance, running away from the truth. Yet, both of them need to stand in front of the mirror, symbolizing the act of facing yourself. You're planning, but there's always another way. Really? But you're the same as me. It's easier just to run. Besides, is what we deserve. No, I'm not like you. Don't worry. I'm not crazy. <laughs> At least, I don't think so. When James finds Laura hiding in the hospital, he tries to treat her with a calming voice, but as soon as she mentions Mary's name, he overtly gets angry with her very suddenly. Why can't you just tell me? You gonna yell at me if I don't? No, I won't. It's also at this point where the player can relate most to James, as the way everyone is speaking to you can be frustrating, speaking in cryptic messages. I'm glad you're alive. Anyway! What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. I was almost killed back there. Why didn't you try to save me? What the fuck, lady? Stop flip-flopping! 
The last scene in which we can see James's anger is when he's frustrated with Maria's answers. Later in the same scene, when James is speaking to Maria behind the prison cells, he's struggling to figure out what's going on. What's the meaning behind Maria's death, Mary's death, who Maria is? He wants to reach out to someone, which Maria does quite literally. This is the only time when James agrees to Maria's advances. He's past his anger and now just wants to figure out what it all means. Maybe he can figure it out if he just lets Maria in. I don't know. Come and get me. I can't do anything through these bars. Okay. Stay right there. I'll be there soon. Once James realizes the truth about what he's done, he falls into a severe depression. He's overwhelmed by the truth, and everything he was hoping to find in Silent Hill is now gone. James finally faces his punishment, the two pyramid heads, one possibly representing James's desire to punish himself, and the other one possibly representing Mary punishing him for the crime he committed. By standing up to his punishments and no longer running away, his guilt kills itself as he accepts what he's done. Now I've always had a theory that none of the endings are true, except for the in-water ending, and this Kubler-Ross comparison actually helps prove that theory. In the Maria ending, when James comes face to face with Mary slash Maria, he tells her that he performed the mercy kill as he couldn't watch her suffer anymore. She tells him that he's not telling the truth, to which James responds that he may have had those feelings. I couldn't watch you suffer. Don't make excuses, James. <laughs> I know I was a burden on you. You must have hated me. That's why you got rid of me. It's true. I may have had some of those feelings. Because James doesn't reach true acceptance here, he relapses as shown by Maria showing similar symptoms of Mary's sickness. <coughs> you better do something about that cough. In the leave ending, when at Mary's bedside, he does admit the truth to Mary. He tells her that he hated her for everything she put him through, but Mary says, then why do you look so sad? No. That's not true. You also said you didn't want to die. The truth is, I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. James. If that were true, then why do you look so sad? James still isn't being 100% honest here, but it's not his fault. He's so close to accepting the truth, but he believes that taking all of the blame is what's right when it isn't. Mary was also to blame for the poison she spit at him and the way that she treated him. Because of this, James still loops back to Silent Hill until he reaches true acceptance. This leads us to... I believe that the in water ending is the true ending to Silent Hill 2. It's only after his true acceptance here by Mary's bedside where Mary tells him that he's suffering and it needs to end. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. <coughs> no. That's not the whole truth. You also said that you didn't want to die. The truth is, part of me hated you for taking away my life. You killed me, and you're suffering for it. It's enough, James. This is followed by James stating that he realizes the true reason he came to Silent Hill. No loop. No reason to return to Silent Hill anymore. The reason why I say that the leave ending is also a loop is because... 
I don't believe that Laura exists. I believe that she's a manifestation of James's love for Mary, or what little of it was left after all the things she had done to him when she was sick. Maria is the manifestation of James's selfishness, all his desire that he wanted when he was instead taking care of Mary. In fact, none of the characters are real, just Mary and James. Yep, that's right, not even Angela or Eddie. If you want to know what that's about, then don't forget to check out my next video where I discuss the true nature of Angela and Eddie. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below for discussions you'd like to see on this channel, hit that subscribe button as it really helps me out, and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified. I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.